Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture, uh, the first of this unit, uh, Roots and Powers. So this one is all about roots, could be cube roots, could be fourth roots, and powers, which if we're talking about x, that would be this number, squared, x cubed, x to the power of 4. Uh, we're also going to talk about when they're negative, if we've got x to the power of negative 3, what are we going to do? Um, that's what this unit is all about. It's all about roots and powers. We're going to de demonstrate an understanding of irrational numbers, uh, essentially numbers that never end, and we are going to demonstrate an understanding of powers with integral and rational exponents, essentially with regular numbers, and then also when uh, the powers are fractions. We are going to work with that. So let's just jump right in. Uh, we have 4.1 which is estimating and then the second part is evaluating roots. So um, I'm just gonna, when I have a line, that's the line that you should fill in there. Uh, three times three is the same as three squared. We are fairly familiar with this. Um, and that equals nine. Therefore, three is a square root of nine. Whenever there are two numbers that are multiplied together to, um, get that it is a square root uh, negative 3 times negative 3 uh, multiplied together also gets you 9 therefore uh, negative 3 is a square root of 9 uh, it gets a little bit more complicated as we get to um, cube roots and when we talk about cube roots uh, that's when we have three numbers of the same that are multiplied together to get a number so 3 times 3 times 3 is the same as saying 3 times 3 times 3 is the same as saying 3 cubed. Uh, and that means that 3 is the cube, that's the third line down, is the cube root of 27. Um, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 does not equal 27, however, it equals negative 27. Therefore, negative 3 is not a cube root. Um, of 27. So the fourth line down is also Q. Uh, when we have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, when we have 3 to the power of 4, that is a fourth root. Negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, all multiplied together would also get us 81. So it is also a fourth root of 81. So when we have cubes, and to the power of 5, which is a fifth root, it gets a little bit more difficult because the negatives and the positives uh, have different um, values when you perform that function to them. Let's talk about some terms that we need to know so that we can all discuss this together. So there's three things there. There's the index, the radicand, and the radical. So when we have a value underneath a radical sign. So this part, when we say like it's a square root sign, that is the radical, okay? And underneath it, um, we have what we call the radicand. I don't use that term too, too much, but um, it's the radicand. And then we have a value here and it could be, if it's not, if there's nothing there, then it's a square root, it's like it's a two. But if there is values there, uh, it could be a three or a four or a five, that is known as the index. So when we talk about the index, that's the value that is in front, over top of the little v, the radicand is underneath it, uh, is underneath the radical. Um, let's estimate some roots. Okay, so we have the root of 12 given to us as the first example. It wants us to estimate uh, what that would be. So we're looking for a decimal. And how we're going to estimate it is we're going to look for two numbers that are around 12 that we do know the square root of. The smaller number around 12 that we know the square root of, like we don't know 11, we don't know 10, but 9, I do know. I know the square root of 9 is 3. And then if I go this way, I don't know 13, 14, 15, 
But I know the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4. So that means the square root of 12 has got to be somewhere in between there, and it's pretty close to the middle. So it's going to be approximately, it's not a very good approximate sign, but you get the idea. It's going to be approximately 3.5. That's what we would estimate. You can check that in your calculator, and it's fairly close. If you're asked to estimate, that is definitely good enough. Um, we can also do the one beside it. We have the third root of 16. So the index is 3, the radicand is 16 under the radical. We know the cube root of what numbers around 16. So 15, no, uh, 14, 13, 10, I don't know 9, but I do know the cube root of 8 is, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. And then what number above this do I know next? Uh, 20, 21, it's actually 27. We know that the cube root of 27 is equal to 3. So it's got to be somewhere in between there. It might be a little bit closer to the 2 than the 3, because uh, this is 11 away and this is only, what, 8? So maybe we'll say it's approximately 2.4. Anywhere around there would be absolutely acceptable when we're estimating roots. Uh, in this unit, there will be no calculator use on the test. Um, so when you're estimating, like, these are your answers. But I'm just saying for now, you can use your calculator to, to check if your estimates are good to see if your answers might be correct. Let's move on. We are now going to evaluate roots. And that, again, will involve no calculators. So evaluate the following. We've got the root of 64 over 25. And whenever we have the root of a fraction, we can break that up. The root uh, will apply to both of these. So we can actually write this as the root of 64 over the root of 25. And we know that 64, uh, the root of 64 is 8. 8 times 8 gets to 64. So that would be 8 over the root of 25 is 5. So we've evaluated that. We're going to leave it in a fraction. We do not want it in a decimal. You're not having it. We do not have our calculator and we do not we do not like mixed fractions. So this is how we will leave it. We would put it in our box. That is our answer. Let's do the third root of 8 over 1000. So again, we can write this as the third root of 8 over the third root of 1,000. And I know what the, the cube root of 8 is. I did it before. It was 2. And the cube root of 1,000, what number times itself 3 times will get us 1,000? That would be 10 times 10 times 10. So we have 2 over 10. And if you were to give me this as an answer, you would get full marks except for half off because we need to reduce it. This is the same as saying 1 over 5. It is 1 fifth, and we need to reduce it for that half mark. So if this was at a 2, this would get you 1.5, and if this was at a, and this would get you the full 2 marks. Okay? Just so that you are aware, always reduce to the um, lowest form. Let's proceed. A couple more to do. I think I can fit them on here without even squishing. Let's do the root of 0.25. Whenever we have a decimal, we are going to change that into a fraction. And I know that 0.25, if I move the decimal over two places, that would get me a whole number, 25. And then I'll have to put it over uh, 100. 25 over 100 is the same as 0.25. So this is the same as saying uh, the root of 25 over 100. And I know the root of both of those. Uh, the root of 25 is 5, and the root of 100 is 10. So that equals 5 over 10. And note, I've just skipped the step of writing it like that. Um, instead of writing it one over another, uh, I have just skipped that step and done gone right to the root. Uh, doing the root of the problem. So I'm left with 5 over 10, and again that would be 1.5 out of 2, so we need to reduce that to a half, and that would be the answer that we would put um, our box around. 
Let's do the last problem. We have so we have the third root of point negative point one two five. Okay, it's good that it's the Q root because we don't have uh, the square root of negative numbers. So um, we can write this, since this is a decimal, we're going to move this over three places, which means we need to put it over 1,000. 125 over 1,000 is the same as this decimal. And if you don't believe me, you can put it into your calculator, except not on the tests or the assessments. So we can write this as the third root of 125 over 1,000. And I know what the third root of both of these numbers are. Uh, the third root of 125 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. We already did the third root of 1,000, it's 10. So we're left with 5 over 10, which is a half. I feel like I've forgotten something, and I have. Uh, I, I dropped the, the negative off as soon as I went to this, and that is wrong. That is not good. So what I can do is I can bring this negative along for the top part. So it actually should have been a negative 125, which would have left me negative 5, which would have left me a negative 1 half. Okay. So if something, if the, something doesn't seem right, don't feel free to go back and check to see what you did wrong. I got to the end and I was like, hmm, it just didn't feel right because I thought I started with a negative and that was true. So um, I hope you were able to estimate and evaluate some of these. Uh, give the next ones a try, and I will see you soon.